Righto, it's come to that time of the day. You've showed me so many delicious meals. I'm starting to feel as full as a grub, but there's one more that we're going to have to do. We can have it for an afternoon tea, or we can have it today for a dessert. But the humble scone. Yeah? Yep. So it's about my turn to yep. show you, yeah? Righto. So, 500 grams of flour, so half a bag of flour. And some yeast to rise. There we go, you might as well take that one too. I'm just going to mix that in together with a little that one sugar. So just a little, around about a teaspoon or a tablespoonful, or a little bit much, that'll do. We don't need, we don't need them in there. Right up. Yes, they don't eat much. And just a bit of salt as well. Okay, so not too much. Boom. We're just going to mix that in so it's thoroughly through with the yeast. Okay, in Australia, of course, we have our self raising flowers. In Germany, you aren't able to find self raising flour, so we do have to add that bit of yeast to you. Okay, I'll just make a dam in the middle and in with a cackleberry. Again, thank you. And cream. And a lemonade. And a lemonade. So about yay much cream and a lemonade. Okay, so the lemonade will actually give it a bit of body, a bit of bubbles. Nick? Yeah. Yeah. Righto. Break that egg. And I just want to mix this up much like a dough so I can handle it. So if it's too, too wet and sticky, it's very hard to handle. Righto. Mix that one in. Now one of the tricks or one of the tips that my grandma actually or my mum taught me was to actually cut the dough. And the least that we handle it, the better it will rise. Yeah? So cut that dough through, keep it aerated. And that's starting to come together pretty good. How's that looking? Yeah? So just so that it doesn't stick to the bowl and not overworked. It looks like I actually jagged the right amount of fluid too, eh? Yes, yes. Spot on. That's pretty good. Okay, now all I need to do is dust this tray. Okay, so I've got a trivet in the bottom of the oven here. And I'm using a Baduri oven today because I love to bake in the Baduri oven. And the foil's only in there for one reason. Get it off. Just to pick it out. That is correct. Okay. So I just make balls around about the size of a golf ball, which reminds me of a great story that we'll share later around the fire. Okay, thank you, dig in. And we just want to make, for lack of a better description, flour. Okay, you can pan this out flat or squash it out, roll it out flat and get a biscuit cutter or, yeah. But I find that when I'm up the paddock fishing, this is just a quick and easy way of making a scone. Either way, we're going to get the same result. Much like your dumplings, eh? Yep. But dry hands, no mess. <laughs> <laughs> that last little bit. Right, so that's been about 10 to 12 minutes. Yeah. I'm starting to get a bit of a whiff there. Yeah. Not too sure if it's got too hot. I'm a little unfamiliar with the wood, but I reckon we're about close. So, one of the things I said to you about the Baduri, yeah. not a lot of trouble to get the ash off the lid. How's that looking? Yeah, fine. Fine? Yeah. We've got that one out of the way. And we'll take these off the heat. I've about smarted myself there. Right, and now we've got a nice fresh batch of scones. Okay, as I said to you earlier, the only reason that I've put these in is so I can just da da and onto the table. 
you know what I do. And then all we should have to do is break a piece off and whip trim, whip crane. We're going to cut him in half and a little bit dowy. Look. What's in his army? It's. Whipped cream is on the way. Whipped cream is on the way. So a little bit of, what do we call it? Marmalade? Yes. Nick? And a bit of finger. <laughs> now, let's see your sample one of them, eh? Australia. That's it, that's very Australian. Nice. Nice? Yes. Sweet, we got it yeah. right. Yeah. So I invite the staff to duck in. I think you should all come and have a crack yeah. at it, yeah?